uh, the discussion of what the future holds, um, I think is, is a good one uh, that needs to be happening uh, constantly. At the beginning of chapter 9 uh, in our text, uh, the author quotes uh, Da Vinci saying, Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. And uh, it reminds me of uh, something I heard several uh, years ago about uh, these turkeys that went and learned. Uh, they all gathered and learned how to fly so they could get out of uh, the turkey farm and wouldn't be killed. And uh, they practiced all day in the barn. They figured out how to do it. And when they left the barn that day, they walked home. And uh, we want, as educators, to make sure that we're not doing that. The question I really wanted to address, uh, kind of from a personal standpoint, is um, are my current classroom techniques helping those I teach become the future scientists, technologists, uh, imagineers who address the social issues of our society uh, and our future? I teach art. I don't teach science. Um, but uh, I have had many, many of my students who uh, who have gone into um, various science fields in biology and genetics and uh, ke um, chemists and so forth. And, uh, and they talk about the skills that they learned in art class. Now, transferring that over to technology is a little bit different in some respects, but um, but the skills that I really focus on, whether it's with my technology classes or with my uh, traditional art classes, is problem solving, uh, it's um, creativity. Uh, one area in which uh, uh, I'm still working with is addressing social issues uh, in our society today. Um, social issues are going to continue to arise. We have new social issues just because of the pandemic, uh, things that um, we had not considered uh, publicly or, or widely um, other than maybe in a Hollywood movie uh, of what would happen uh, on a social scale. And having the skills that we uh, learn with our technology uh, in uh, crowdsourcing information through our PLCs and uh, PLNs um, and doing action research. These are the, the kinds of um, skills that students need to learn and uh, learn how to apply uh, those skills um, whether they're a student uh, now in, in K-12 or uh, in college or as, a, as an adult in a profession of some kind. And then these jobs that, that we can't even imagine right now. Uh, I really like that article um, in in the reading uh, from the Institute for Future Research. And the example they give is the um, um, the with genetic um, uh, ethics and uh, somebody who's well-versed in, in genetics and biology and sociology and psychology and and uh, all of these different areas. Um, and it's going to be really crucial that we're teaching students how to hang out at the crossroads of these areas instead of, uh, instead of being so well grounded in one area. And not that that's a bad thing, but uh, we're shortchanging them. Uh, when it comes to 
job opportunities in their future. If they don't know how to uh, make connections between uh, these various groups, uh, these various professions, uh, we, uh, we're doing them a disservice. Uh, so I think it's really important as an educator uh, to be able to uh, provide experiences for students where we can bring in uh, working with other teachers, other professionals, uh, and allow students to see how, in my case, how art and science are going to integrate. Uh, how's that... Uh, How's that going to work out um, and, uh, and see how these areas can really be, or see how students can really push uh, themselves in these areas and make the connections themselves. If we're showing them the connections the whole time, are they really going to learn um, or can we practice it? Can we scaffold it? And then... I give them uh, opportunities, real-world uh, scenarios in which they can explore and collaborate and uh, communi um, and think creatively uh, to come up with solutions and practice these things in the classroom uh, and then in, in turn help them prepare for their future.